Hey everybody, welcome back. I want to show you uh, something I've been working on for AC joints. And this is something that uh, is, is kind of popular whenever you have somebody that has any kind of separation injury at their AC joint where you know the clavicle and the acromion aren't aligned anymore. It doesn't have to be a full-blown grade 3 tear. It could be a more minor disruption, but it doesn't even have to be an AC tear by, you know, per se. But one of the things that we notice is that either over time or Maybe it's a slight injury to the shoulder, but not a separation of the AC joint or, you know, chronically lying on your shoulder. All different kind of things may be able to cause it. But um, the movement between the uh, acromion and the distal clavicle is somehow impaired. And especially, you know, with abduction of the arm, that congruency needs to be as optimal as possible, at least from what I'm looking at. Now, this is obviously a right shoulder in terms of the model, but we're going to be looking at his left shoulder. And really, we're going to first palpate between the two and assess his movement with active abduction, uh, essentially blocking at the distal clavicle. Um, we do this in one, a, a few courses with the Institute of Physical Art in terms of looking at optimal shoulder mobility. And this is just one way to screen that because if somebody has full motion of the glenohumeral joint for abduction, that's going to be about 90 to 100 degrees depending on who you're talking to. Um, some literature says up to 120, I don't necessarily agree with that. But, um, so one of the things that we look at is as we passively hold at the uh, shoulder here and his distal clavicle, and then have him move into abduction, optimally we should see that this doesn't rise up as he's abducting his arm. But even if I hold him down, that's about all he's got. You know, you can see that's kind of a struggle. He has full range of motion. I mean, you can look at him and tell he's got abduction, but he's really using a lot of other things to get that versus optimal movement through this AC area. And when, we, when, I'm, when I'm showing this in a class, one of the things that I talk about is just end feel and what you're feeling, especially as we talked about that in IPA. And with me, if there's a big dysfunction at the AC joint, it feels like there is a big block right here at the top of their shoulder. And usually the patient will go, yeah, I, feel, I really feel that. It's jammed. It's just tight right there. So the mobilization I'm going to go through, I'll show you if he can lie on his back for us, is essentially to help realign that area. And like I said, this is a right shoulder, so it's going to be a little different, but I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my, the web space of one hand, and I'm going to bring it up on the lateral scapula, like so, and stabilize underneath that glenoid, like that. If I do that, and then I take my other hand and bring it down on top of the distal clavicle, I can more or less work to approximate the two. And then I'm going to have the patient you know, working with the angle of their arm, and passively and actively abducting their arm to help I don't know if it's recruiting deltoids or other fibers. It, it really helps to kind of bring the two together. Sometimes you'll even feel, hear, or notice there's kind of this crunch, this crepitus as the joint surface kind of comes back into alignment. And then afterward, hopefully we'll give you guys a good result on the video to show you that, yeah, he's got full optimal range of motion once we're done with it. So here is, that's what it looked like on the model. Here's what it's gonna look like with a live patient. I'm going to hold his arm like so. Like I said, my web space is going to go up lateral scapula to that inferior glenoid. And then this hand is going to grab along this distal clavicle here. And you tell me if anything's doing comfortable. And then while you're here, you can kind of play around and wiggle around looking for that proper end feel whether it's in terms of direction of ease or direction of, of bind. But I bring, work the two together, and you kind of get a sense for it the more you work with it in terms of which direction you want to go. But I'm going to come along, start to in increase his abduction, just at his glenohumeral joint, really. And we get a little bit of that at the AC joint with the scapula coming around. But here, right about up here, I'm feeling I'm not really moving at his scapula anymore. It's more just the glenohumeral joint. So right here, I'm going to say, can you abduct your arm? Can you push your arm into me? As he does that, I further help bring the two together and approximate this way. And then he lets go. 
And I see, can I take up any more slack? You okay with that? Mm -hmm. so this can be a little uncomfortable, especially if the patient is not used to feeling that discomfort. So I always want to check in with them for that and say, push your arm up into me again. And as he's doing that, I'm further bringing these two together and really working on approximating those two and bringing those back in a proper alignment. Relax again. And I kind of feel like we've taken up all the slack that we're gonna get. I'm gonna have him do that one more time. So you'll notice, you know, we're still not going above that 90 to 100 degree mark and relax there at his shoulder. So we can't really say that we're, you know, going further up into uh, motion purely at the AC joint, not at the glenohumeral joint anymore. But for whatever reason, it seems to help. It seems to work still. So you can sit back up, please. All right, so we're gonna do our reassessment, which is pretty much just range of motion. And we're gonna again, hold down that as distal clavicle. He's gonna bring his arm up. Have to help him a little bit, but that gets better. The uh, nice thing about it though, is when this works really well, you know, the person like, well, that is better. Definitely better than before. So we'll have him do it actively just to see if it feels any different to him. Yeah, that's where I start to feel. It was probably somewhere in the 80 to 90 ish range that I started to feel a little bit up, upward. Yeah. So he's able to keep his scapula stabilized and keep it down on a, on a more appropriate basis than it was before. We certainly felt that block more limited right around 90 degrees, but if we um, tune in, it happens much more toward maybe 160 now. So quite a bit of difference. Uh, you know, he has, he has some crepitus in there from his previous injury. But that's something that's pretty neat. I mean, you can work and mobilize the AC joint a number of different ways, and we show that in a lot of the courses that we teach. But this is something that I haven't been shown before. I'm sure somebody's come up with it in the past, but I've kind of looked at it and played around with it. I really think it helps and really works well especially for certain patients that have this you know, limitation with abduction mainly. So when you kind of approximate the two joint surfaces together in that kind of fashion, you can work around with it, use some active movements with the mobilization itself, and it tends to really help. Afterward, you can tape if you want to, the traditional taping of the AC joint, um, medial to lateral and then A to P, to really help keep that joint more congruent whole number of different things you can work for a home program after that but anyway that's just something I was playing with wanted to show everybody take that hope you practice it work with it tell me what you think and write it in comments share it Facebook Twitter all those other things that we get to look at and appreciate you guys watching see you next time